The 10th anniversary of the former Libya's leader, Muammar Gaddafi, comes as the country prepares for December election, part of a United Nations-led peace process that some hope will help start a new, more peaceful chapter in Libya's history. Since Gaddafi's demise, Libya has fractured along regional and ideological lines with an assortment of mafia-like militia and their foreign backers vying for control of the oil-rich country. In regards to the situation in Libya in the last 10 years since the death of Muammar Gaddafi, the country went through phases. At first, the situation was good, but then things started to get worse, a bit by bit, until we got till now. After that, 10 years have passed since the death of Gaddafi. We are currently living in a conflict due to a failure in crisis management. Many Libyans hope that the upcoming elections will help solve the crisis. The presidential poll is set for December 24, a legislative elections in January. We are hoping that the elections of the 24th December will help lead to a better life and to political stability and security, as well as civil transition to a state of law. Gaddafi ruled Libya with an iron fist for 42 years after a 1969 coup against the monarchy, portraying himself as a revolutionary Arab and African hero while mercilessly crushing all opposition figures in the country. The issues that bar the nationwide and SARS protests in Nigeria are still a very much a daily occurrence in the country, according to a legal practitioner that spoke with the Associated Press. A judicial panel of inquiry was created to look into cases of police brutality, the remaining issues of the protests and killings by security forces. There are several forces in police custody, regardless of whether they're doing the protest or not, that are still in custody because of indiscriminate reach from the police. Dozens of petitions remain unattended to with at least nine states embarking on indefinite adjournment with no debt to resume. We have a poor system of police whereby the police can hold on to suspect as much as they like and nothing will happen. Then we have the... Uh, fought of some sometimes the court too most of these things take time the last year incident of lake Itolga shooting of peaceful protesters snowball into a level of destruction never seen before in the commercial capital lagos civil society groups are now planning another round of protests as grievances over police abuses in the slow criminal justice system remain Hundreds of truck drivers in Sudan have continued their month's strike blocking access to the main sea entry point. The demonstrations began when key eastern tribes opposing the transitional government in Khartoum blocked roads and stopped shipment at the Red Sea port. They are calling for the cancellation of parts of an October 2020 peace deal signed between the government and the rebel groups. <laughs> This checkpoint has been here since the 17th of last month, and we only allow small cars loaded with materials destined for the eastern region. This checkpoint will not be removed until our demands are met. I have been stuck here for 23 days exactly. I am not going to talk for myself, but rather for the general public. The majority of these drivers have been suspended for 23 days. Four weeks since the crisis erupted in mid-September, basic supplies to the rest of the country northeastern region have been delayed, triggering a fresh wave of shortage nationwide. The approximate daily income of the container terminal is equivalent to hundreds of thousands of dollars, and the road closure period took longer than we expected. We are now facing daily losses. The longer the period of road closure gets, the bigger the losses. Sudan has also been gripped by a bitter and deepening political divide among key factions steering the transition under the August 2019 power sharing deal. <laughs> Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan met with his counterpart in Togo on Tuesday as part of his three-day visit to Africa. The two leaders met in Lome for a day of detailed discussions. Recep Tayyip Erdogan reiterated Turkey's commitment to Togo 
in the fight against terrorism. Initially, the Turkish leader was in Angola where he met his counterpart President Joao Lorenzo on Monday in Luanda. Erdogan is scheduled to visit Nigeria where he will meet President Buhari on Wednesday. Togo's president, Foy Yasibe, has received his Turkish counterpart, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, in Lome. The reception and meetings are part of a three-leg Africa trip of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. It followed a meeting with Angolan President Jao Lorenzo on Monday in Luanda at the start of the trip. In Lome on Tuesday, Erdogan and Yasibe discussed issues of economic cooperation, the financing of the industrial platform of Ade Tikope, located at the northern exit of Lome, and also terrorism. In less than a year, several Togolese ministers, including foreign affairs, security and armed forces, have successfully visited Ankara. The visit is seen as a key step in strengthening Turkey and Africa's trade relations, which has grown from 5 to $25 billion since 2003. Almost non-existent then, Turkish investments on the continent have also exploded. They now amount to $6.5 billion according to official figures.